Okay. All right. You, you shoot. I probably could have waited to do this, um, but I do want to do some some icebreakers. Uh, you know, usually it's a silly question, but y'all just want to give a quick check in on how the holidays went. Did you? I guess the question is, did you survive the holidays, or did you thrive? <laughs> Kathy, you're first on my screen if you want to start. I survived. I mean, uh, did the best we could with, uh, you know, there was probably just a couple days that we went over or okay. under, more under for me than over. Okay. Uh, yeah, isn't that interesting? Uh, uh, most of the people have a history of going way over on the holidays, but once you've really kind of built up your metabolism, it's actually really easy to go under. That was my big issue. Um, I, I, I did pretty good, but it was just my, uh, my in-laws don't eat nearly as much protein. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to tell the mother-in-law that, you know, I'm just not going to tell her I need more chicken. So I just, I snuck a little bit here and there and then had my protein shakes. <laughs> uh, uh, Kim, how about you? I was definitely under. And in fact, believe it or not, I have lost my, I have misplaced the bag that holds, that has my protein powder and my peanut butter powder. Somehow when we were straightening up and cleaning and getting ready for a company, um, it got moved and I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had just bought a new um, jug of it from, you know, Academy. And so I'm like, oh, like the big bag, you're talking the big bag. Yeah, the big one of, oh. of protein. And so I've got to, I've got to make a mental note to ask my husband and my daughter tonight, did somebody move? Because I keep it in a bag so that I can transport it easily. And then I, I usually try to set up and just take enough with me for the week. But I, you know, I measure out. Anyway, somehow the bag that I keep it in got misplaced and moved out of the pantry, and I don't know where it went. <laughs> well, I have uh, I, I have misplaced far more than just that over the holidays. So yeah, I, I can I can resonate with that. <laughs> All right, uh, who is I can't Renee? You, you I've seen some cute pictures with grandkids. Looks like you've been thriving. Yeah, doing good. The holidays, I was way under with the stomach virus and some days zero food, basically, but uh -huh. doing better. And I was able to pick back up kind of where good. I left off pretty easily. Good. Okay. Okay. Um, awesome. Let's see. Jennifer Clay, you're next. Did you survive, thrive, take it to the next oh. level, fall back? <laughs> well, had a great time with the family and so in that way we all thrived I think but um Perfect. the protein I was under carbs you know I shot over some days but then managed others so uh, yeah. you know I, it wasn't it wasn't a total blowout awesome awesome hey I'll take uh I'll take a not total blowout that's that's great yeah uh, Wonderful. And anything else? Any, any, were you able to, uh, how, were y'all you, you able to maintain exercise or did that kind of totally go out of the window? How was that? I exercised. Great. Great. Okay, sweet. Yeah. So I didn't see that in your second. So that's awesome to hear. Way to go. It, I sent it in late. I mean, yesterday and I forgot to text you. Sorry okay, about awesome. that. Uh, no, no worries. I'll, I'll, I'll check on it for you and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that that's, that we're on the same page with that. Um, and Jane, welcome. I don't know if your if your audio will work. I'll, does it work? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you. Can okay. you hear your voice? Yeah. So survived. Um, okay. I was sick most of the break. Um, not COVID, but other respiratory issues, and so um, steroids and antibiotics and all that. So definitely under. Um, all of my kind of goals did not hit the protein, but um, survived and I'm finally feeling um, a little bit better. Awesome. It's a, it, this isn't a knock, you know, it, it's, it's Zoom etiquette, you know, I don't, but you do still sound a little bit stopped up. So you, you sound a little sick still. Yeah, it's still, I, I just went to the doctor yesterday, but I trust me, today's so much better than <laughs> where it was. So, yeah. <laughs> Good. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's great. I, I look forward to, uh, obviously we can all touch base in more detail just kind of as the week goes, but thanks for that, for that quick check-in. Um, 
I am going to jump in real quick. Um, as always, if you've got questions, stop me. I go at your pace. <laughs> um, I go at your pace as long as I can keep up. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen. Please give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Yep. Okay. Hey, I'm just going to make one quick joke or note before I dive in. Kim, I need to get, I desperately need to get a haircut before drill, but I also have to quarantine this whole week. So either way, I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I can't win. <laughs> I just realized that <laughs> looking at myself, I'm like, oh, dang. All right. Um, so today, this, this topic is, is, it's a really important topic. Um, and it's just in regards to, to programming your exercise programming, you may not have heard that word before, and it's a bit of like an insider language term. It might not be the most helpful term to use there. Um, but the way I'm using it, programming is the key. It is the foundation to effective exercise. So in, you know, the goal, one of the goals that I have for my clients is that after we work together is you pretty much for the rest of your life understand how important uh, programming your exercise is, and you're pretty much always following some programming for your exercise. Um, and th the reason for that is, is like programming is just the way to organize your exercise so that it is progressing toward a specific goal. Um, the reason why that's important is because random exercise will only give you random results. And most people don't want random results. Most people want specific results. So you, you may have never heard, the, has anybody heard this word before, like in regards to exercise, you know, following a program, or is, is that something y'all are familiar with? Or is this totally new? Well, VitalFit has a program. We just, I don't really know what it is, but I'm assuming yeah. there's a program to it. Yes, yes. So, so VitalFit does have a program. Um, uh, by the way, I'm always sort of doing this in the background, whether or not I tell you like it is programmed. So it, it, it's kind of a spectrum. You could be following a very rigid program. You could be following one that's a little bit more loose. Um, okay, so you know VitalFit has a program. Anybody else? Anybody else have exposure to that to that word or two? I'll I'll show I'll show you sort of at the end, Jennifer, what VitalFit's program is. Well, I think we, we've always heard it as you need to schedule your exercise. I, I'm not sure that programming your exercise is a term that I've heard used, but that's okay. Great, great. Okay. So that's a good example. So, so, um, so I'll show you pr programming has about four, uh, four characteristics to it. And one of them would be following a schedule. Um, so yeah, so I'll walk you through that. And so a lot of the things that we preach will lay the foundation to programming your exercise in the future. Okay. So vital fit. So, um, you know, scheduling, anything else that comes to mind? It doesn't have to be anything, but. Yeah, uh, pro, maybe the, like if you're lifting weights, uh, uh, what you're doing, you know, uh, are you building your arms? Are you uh, doing deadlifts or th that, you know, making you know like whenever I do it at home I, I I have the whiteboard like Jackie does and I I just write down what I have I have so I can perfect okay so so specific movements programming or okay. you, you even mentioned arms like upper body is a is a, is a common program okay at, so well, I'm gonna... is it is it a program or is it a I mean you got each of the th you have to set your objectives right is that yep. what you mean? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so so I'll, I'll try to clarify some of, some of this pretty quickly, but you're all kind of on the right track. Everything, nothing that you're all saying is wrong. Um, but sometimes you'll see that there's like an upper body program, which is just a, a set plan to increase the strength or maybe the size of your upper body if you want big arms or just functional arms. Um, and one of the comments that I'll make, if you are in vital fit or if you're in CrossFit, it's no secret that doing programming in a group is pretty challenging. Um, so if you do like a CrossFit gym or if you've heard of Orange Theory or if you do Vital Fit, it's hard to do programming because a whole class won't progress the same way. So if you are in Vital Fit or a CrossFit gym or Orange Theory, 
we can still find ways to make sure you're getting programmed exercise that still is moving you a little bit more specifically. Um, so I'll just, I'll preface it with that and then I'll dive in and, and hopefully I'll answer uh, all these questions. The, the goal of this discussion is that in about a week, because we'll, we'll kind of communicate through this week and I'll, I'll do my homework, which is committing with you to figure out kind of, to, to define some specific exercise goals. But my goal is in about a week, each of you have a pretty good, um, ha have a good, like ha have some action items that you can incorporate into your life that don't necessarily take you much more time in the gym. Like programming isn't about working out more. It's about working out more specifically and with more targeted goals. So whether you are participating in a group class, but maybe sometimes you can only make it twice a week or or maybe there's one goal outside of that class that you could accomplish. You know, pro programming could be as simple as, um, we got a couple people that aren't on the call, but that will watch this recording, like increasing the amount you walk. Well, how can we just schedule and structure an intentional, intelligent way to increase the amount you walk? So no matter where you are, we, we can program your exercise a little bit better just based on your goals. So action on from this is in about a week, you've got a pretty solid program that you know you can follow that's going to move you closer to your goals than, than, you, than you have been in the past. Um, I'll also try to explain why you don't need to you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to make the argument that programming is really important, but I'll, sh I'll, I hope to show you why I don't have to hit you with it on the first day. Like it's, it's not the most important thing is to start moving and then we'll program. So most of you, it's a good time for us to start uh, having more intelligent programming. Okay. So here are the principles of effective exercise um, that make up the structure of a good program. Um, these principles of effective exercise are the ones that have been demonstrated in the scientific literature and that have also been demonstrated by top athletes and competitors. So, you know, whether you're like a Russian Olympic strength lifter or you are, you know, playing for a football team or you just, you get a lot of uh, success with a, with a client who has a specific, who achieves a specific result. These have been demonstrated over the last 150 years to be the things that are important. Um, and here's what I'll say. If your exercise doesn't follow these four rules, you're shortchanging yourself. And without spending much more effort, you could probably get a lot more results. So oop, that's supposed to have an E, progressive, or well, that's supposed to have an E there. Um, okay, so the first rule is specificity. Um, does anybody want to just take a go at defining that before I define it? What would specificity in exercise uh, include, or if that's an important rule, what, what would that apply to? Well, specific exercises that you're going to do during that workout. Mm -hmm. And in regards to those exercises, what, how, what kind exercises should be specific in what ways or what ways? To the portion of the body you're working out. Okay. Alternating maybe arms, legs, that kind of thing. Okay. So they should be specific to maybe part of the body that you want to improve, right? It, the, 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 the short answer is that your exercise should pretty much be specific in every way, but your movement should be specific to the movements that you want to improve. So if you want to get up and down with kids or grandkids, you want to get on the floor and you want to get back up, um, you're not going to get any better at that by pressing a dumbbell over your head. So actually in the gym, you should probably structure in some movement for you getting up and down from the floor. If you don't practice getting up and down from the floor, you won't get better at it. So movement should be specific to the goal that you are trying to accomplish. Now, maybe you're trying to accomplish, um, you want stronger legs because stronger legs, you can go hiking um, without, you, 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 you know, you want stronger legs so you can go hiking then you should be working out your legs. But you won't get big legs by working out your arms. You won't get strong legs by getting strong arms. Does that kind of make sense? So specificity is an ever deepening. You can only get more specific as you get better at training. And, you, and that, that specificity will improve your, your, um, your outcomes. So the rule, specificity movements that you train should be specific to the movements you want to improve. That is very simple, but it is the easiest rule to break. Hundred, hundred percent. I see this rule broken all the time. 
Is anybody a sports fan, like a football or an NBA fan, maybe ba basketball or football? Kim, are you you're a basketball fan? I'm both basketball and football. Okay, so so picture what do um, before a basketball game, at, almost before every game, they run warm up drills. And what do those warm up drills kind of look like? What, what's what's one example of a warm up drill that 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 you might see before a basketball game? A lot of times they'll they'll dribble and somebody will set a screen and then they'll rotate off and go do a, a jump shot from the uh, you know, like a three point line or something. Okay. So that would actually, that would be a good drill because in a game, you're often going to set a screen, go to a side and, and take a, a pull up shot. So that's a good example. But um, I always laugh because almost before every game, you'll see at least one guy standing in a corner taking 15 threes in a row. And that is not specific to how you take three pointers in a basketball game. But they like, also do lay, layups because how many people miss layups? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so layups is true. But just, just like, like if you want to specifically practice your three, and this has been demonstrated, you should get people to practice taking a three-pointer like every couple of minutes. And like that's the interval that you should practice because that's when the most you'll get them in a game. Anyway, this is one example of a way that they can practice not, not specifically, but their time would be better spent taking a three-pointer than taking a layup, then maybe playing some defense and going back to it. So it's just one example of how we can make it more specific. So th this applies to skills, but it also applies to like exercise. Um, so specificity is a fun one. One of, the, one of the pieces of homework that I am gonna ask for you is to just define what are some specific things that you wanna improve in your everyday life? Um, so again, some people like, a lot of people have a passion for hiking. Well, let's, let's make sure that the time you're spending in the gym is really gonna contribute to you having a better hiking experience, being able to go a little bit longer or on some more fun hikes. Um, okay, so any questions on that? Any any insights? Anything that that kind of lights a a light bulb up for? Anything you're doing not specifically right now that you could do more specifically? We'll find some, I'm sure. I had a miscommunication with my coach. My big goal for working with my coach the last couple of weeks was. Uh, to increase strength. And so to, if you want to get stronger, literally you just lift heavier things. Um, that's, that's a specific, like that's a, a, a application of specificity. If you want to get strong, lift heavy things. Um, movements are specific to the movements that I wanted to improve. Well, he, get, he set me up with a program that's hypertrophy, which is building size of muscles. Because as a coach, he wants to see, he wants to show pictures of his clients getting bigger muscles. As a client, I just wanted to get stronger. I didn't care how I looked. Um, so anyways, I, I set up with, I decided to actually try his program and I didn't like it as much. So anyways, that's just kind of a, that's my, my example. Okay, frequency. This one's huge. So this was you, Kim, you said you talked about scheduling exercise. So yes, so this is where frequency comes in. If you're not following a pattern and if you're not, um, it, like you won't make improvement unless you are consistently training that improvement or training towards that improvement. So if you play piano um, uh, one time a day for 10 months, you'll probably be pretty good at piano. If you play piano once every month for 10 years, you might only be slightly better than you were at the very beginning. And that's a huge barrier that a lot of people have. Actually, for this reason, I'm not anti, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of negative connotations, to like a fitness phase, having like a, a, a fitness phase, you know, or like, like you jump on a, a bandwagon, and sometimes you fall off. I'm actually okay with like scheduling phases. And some of you I've said, hey, let's make this phase like, let's do home workouts for like eight weeks. And then like, you don't have to do home workouts in 10 weeks, but let's like commit to it for eight weeks. And that's because like focusing the, the, the it, it's just like piano. If you try to build a little bit of muscle over a year, you're gonna get worse results than if you try, try pretty hard for three months and then just stopped. So, uh, so you, you, in many ways, your frequency should be sustainable but at times, like if you have a specific goal, actually, Jennifer, you're on here. You know, I've told you, I don't think you need to train four times for the, a week for the rest of your life. 
but you're in a really good position to train four times. Right. Right. I think I said like, hey, four weeks, let's do four times a week and really, you know. So, and, and the reason for that was because that's the kind of frequency that's going to contribute your best specific outcome that we were looking for. Does that make sense? Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions on frequency? This is the hard one. You know, it, it, this is a hard one to do. It's, it's hard to get in the gym consistently, especially when we all have to quarantine and we, we're getting sick and the holidays come, you know, we very often don't have a schedule that's just really easy to get in the gym the, the amount of times we want. Okay, the next one is intensity. So uh, this one's hard too. It's probably not quite as hard as frequency, um, but, but intensity. Training should be challenging. Um, intensity, it just, it needs to be challenging in a specific way that will yield the result that you want. But intensity can look a lot different. So sometimes intensity will make you sweat a lot, but it's not going to make your muscles sore. Um, so how many people have gotten on the, let's see. Yeah. How many people have been in a sauna in the last couple of months or in a year? Has anyone ever been in a sauna? <laughs> Saunas are out of fashion now just because of the social distancing. So you can stay in a sauna for a long time. Uh, you could probably use a sauna every day for a year. And are you going to get any stronger? No. no. Yeah, you're, you're not going to get any stronger. What rule does that go back to? Well, because you're not exercising muscles, you're just sweating. Okay, and so what, what principle of exercise does that apply to? Primarily. Specificity. Specificity. Yeah, specificity. Now, but a sauna is an intense exercise experience. Uh, I'll lose five pounds in a sauna if I'm in there for 15 minutes. If I do a little bit of cardio in there, like if I do a couple burpees in a sauna, I'll lose a ton of fluid just because I'm sweating so much. But so, so the intensity that you're using should be the kind of intensity that you're looking for. So that doesn't mean a sauna is not good, but conversely, if you're trying, but, but a sauna will improve your heat conditioning. So if what you want to improve is like, I've worked with some people that like a big thing that they want to improve is that they sweat a lot socially and like, you know, they'll just go to a party or a function and they're sweating a bunch and there's no reason for them to be sweating. Well, actually, we could do some sauna training for them and that will actually decrease the amount they're sweating in their social life. So again, but you do need to have a consistent level of intensity most times you're working out. Um, almost every time you work out, you should be able to point to a measure of intensity and say that was intense. So when I lift weights, oh yeah, you go, Kim. I was going to say, so getting in a sauna will help you um, not sweat as much when you work out? Yeah, it'll, it'll increase your body's efficiency at cooling you down. Um, so uh, when I went to Gulfport for training in the summer uh, of, I guess, two years ago, I uh, would weld in a metal box in 110 degree heat with with 95 percent humidity and i would be in there for six hours so i would sweat so much i started to actually electrocute myself with the welder but when i came back to tennessee i don't i don't sweat i've never sweat as much as i did before then my body's just like heat condition now so that's just kind of one example so if hey, not ever, yeah 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 i know right and they have they have at home saunas now uh so when i go to the gym and lift weights I don't sweat that much. I sweat a little bit, um, but I actually don't sweat that much. But the next day, I'll have some tightness in my muscles and some soreness that I need to work out as my muscles grow. But if I like, like sometimes, some of us really like the sweat. It just, we feel better when we get a good sweat on. Um, and so like, I'll do the cycle and I'll just get on the cycle just because I like to sweat too. I, I, I get a good sweat on. That's kind of a different kind of intensity. But a huge place where people go wrong with with intensity is they miss kind of with, with their exercises they misdiagnose their intensity so people will say um i did i did a new kind of workout it's like a new it, it's a new form of workouts where you hold a pose for a specific amount of time and i was so sore and so they think that well i was so sore and so therefore i got a good workout well it might just be a kind of intensity you've never really pushed your body into 
So again, that kind of goes back to specificity as well. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is there should be a level of intensity that you're able to maintain. Now, a hugely important thing about intensity is that what, what many percent of y'all are doing with your nutrition actually will allow you to contribute or to participate in your exercise with more consistent intensity. Okay, what do I mean by that? What we do with our nutrition allows you for more consistent intensity. How would that maybe be? And this will, pro this will probably apply to everyone in here that, that y'all have applied this, whether or not we identified it. Well, wouldn't it have to do with the amount of protein and carbs that we're eating? That that great, great. Flesh that out. What, what does that mean? So the amount of protein and carbs that you're eating has something to do with intensity. What? Well, of course, you expend carbs first. So mm -hmm. um, the more carbs you eat, the you're going to burn more carbs the more intense that you work out. And proteins mm -hmm. help you work out longer, right? Okay, you're, I think you're really close. You're, you're not going to run the door. You said, you said, but you, yeah, you're basically right. But I, I'm, flip it though. You said um, you use, you, you use carbs in your workout, basically. So I would flip it and say, you need carbs for your workout. And not everybody needs to be on high carbs, but basically you need fuel. If you're working, if you're eating 1200 calories a day, I see this all the time. People eat 1200 calories a day and go into CrossFit. That is, and do a, a super high intense CrossFit workout. They are dragging. They do not have nearly the energy to keep up with the kind of intense workout that they're wanting to do. And so a person like that, if you give them 600 more calories on a workout day, they'll often feel so much better they're actually going to be able to work out harder. They're going to be able to push their body harder. And then actually more protein allows you to recover more from that workout so you can be prepared the next day for your next workout. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer, I've talked with you about this a couple of times. What, do you remember what I said? You said to be, be sure to have some carbs either right before or right after a workout. Yeah, so. we talked about we talked about meal timing. What else, just think bigger picture. Bigger picture, you know, we could have dieted at the very beginning, or we could have gone into like oh. foundation. Why yeah. did we do that? Oh, I I definitely needed to strengthen. I mean, the the idea of getting more muscles was, you know, um, going to help me in the long haul mm -hmm. and allow me to be able to uh, lose weight at, you know, on the back end, it wasn't the, the primary objective at initially. So of, yep. of the phase that we're in. Yep. So that's great. So, so, so building muscle and you wouldn't really be able to build muscle if you weren't eating enough food. But, but the, another thing that, that I, I'm just from a safety standpoint, if you're going to try to participate in regular intense exercise, you need, you're much more likely to get injured if you're not fueling that exercise with your nutrition. So if you're, uh, if you're squatting a lot, for example, but you're not giving um, uh, fuel to your tendons and ligaments, you might injure those tendons and ligaments. So if somebody hasn't been exercising and they're going to jump into vital fit or CrossFit, they're going to need to get a bit more fuel. <laughs> Jane, I, I don't know if you're in a place where you can talk, but do you remember what I said about uh, about my rule for CrossFitters? Well, I remember I was talking about um, making sure that there's enough protein, you know, what you've already mentioned um, <laughs> for a workout, you know, keeping the calories up for how much you exert. Yeah, my, my specific rule is that um, unless there are like, Ex extremely like crazy circumstances my crossfitters eat carbs because uh crossfit yeah. is a super high intense workout you're running at a really high level and the the, the fuel substrate that your body needs to maintain that is carbohydrate so that's yeah. kind of the that's, that's the specific application there it's because i know you want to get a really intense workout that we want to fuel that 
Okay, and the last rule, this is the fun rule. This is kind of the, this is where you get to see your, your progress, literally. You get to see yourself progress. Um, the intensity of your workout should not be static. Instead, it should increase in proportion to your gaining or increasing fitness. So if you want to build strength, say you can deadlift 100 pounds and you want to be able to deadlift 140 pounds. So you're going to start by deadlifting 100 pounds. And then at some point, you're going to need to deadlift 110 pounds. Well, but your goal is to deadlift 140 pounds. So at some point, you're going to need to push it up to 120 pounds. And so you're going to slowly increase the, um, you, you actually increase the intensity towards the goal that you're trying to accomplish. So if you can deadlift 100 pounds, your goal is to deadlift 140 pounds. The intensity in this analogy that you're trying to increase is 40 pounds of weight. And so we slowly increase the intensity as measured by, by poundage until you reach that goal. Now, say you can, re you can deadlift 100 pounds 10 times. When you jump from 100 pounds to 110 pounds, you might only lift that six times. Because, you know, you, you can't, you're not going to be able to lift it 10 times, likely. Um, so you increase the intensity in terms of weight, but you decrease the intensity in terms of reps. But you're still progressively increasing the intensity over one variable. Does that kind of make sense? This just gets into basic kind of math. That's a uh, big thing that you've, you've mentioned to me is, you know, to try to go ahead and bump it up on the weight and, and therefore, obviously you're not going to be able to do as much. And I haven't practiced that as well as you've preached it, but I've been trying. Yeah. And so, so J Jennifer, you, so here's the deal. This, again, this is another reason why I said, I'm always kind of working these in the background, but you don't need to understand this all at the beginning if you haven't been working out consistently for five years or a year and then you start working out for about three months for most of that time you could still be considered you know over the three months you're still doing progressive overload you know what i mean oh like, yeah no doubt about it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. So that's why I haven't been over here just like, like, ah, like, are you doing progressive overload perfectly? Like, this is a spectrum. But as you get, as you grow in your fitness, then we can progressively overload more intelligently in a more focused fashion as you go. And you'll be actually begin to make progress even faster um, as you, as you get better at this. Uh, but you, you don't, a lot of people tell me, actually, let me see if there's anyone on this call that I remember. Actually, I think, Renee, we did this. I think at the beginning you said, uh, I'd like to work out five days a week, if I remember correct. You said it was just it's easier for my schedule to just do it every day. And mm -hmm. do you remember what I, what I told you? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say, so, hey, just do three. Because yeah. if you're following progressive overload, you're going to progress. You're going to be doing better. There's not a benefit to crazy overload more than there's a benefit to progressive overload. In fact, if you do more than progressive overload, if you do like rapid overload, you're more at higher risk of burning out or higher, at higher risk of getting injured. So as long as you can point to a variable that you're progressively overloading, you're gonna be absolutely fine. And there's not a need to go more than that because you're probably not gonna get any more results than, than just going progressively. So it's the same thing I do. If, if you've been getting 3,000 steps a day and we have a goal for you to get to 8,000 steps, I'm not going to jump you up to 8,000 in one week. We'll probably jump up to 4,500, you know, something like that. And really, you can kind of progress to the point where, so say you, um, so, so Renee, if you're coasting through now at this point, you, you're, you're really killing it three days of exercise you're really not getting sore anymore you're kind of popping up on that fourth day and you want to get another workout in that's the great time once the intensity begins to diminish because you're now more fit than your three days is allowing you that's when we would jump you up so actually pretty soon renee we probably couldn't can jump to four days a week and i wouldn't jump straight to five yet i would jump to four we could probably follow that for six weeks maybe eight weeks and then jump you to five at that point if you're feeling really good we could maybe go a little faster than that it just just kind of depends
Okay, so those are the four primary principles of effective exercise. And then I'll show you, uh, I'll show you at least one example. And then we can just talk specifics. Back to sharing screen. Okay, so if you've seen this before, you know, stop me if you've seen this before. So point to, I, I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit. Tell me a couple of ways that you see those four principles of exercise through this kind of home workout program. Well, it's very specific. Very specific. Um, and, and it looks like the intensity goes up from week two to three, week three to four. Okay, in what ways is the intensity going up? You're doing more rounds and you're doing your alternate, you're doing more rounds, but fewer reps. To, yep. To intensity. Uh, actually here you do a, you actually do more reps first and then you do fewer reps, more rounds. It's a little bit heavier. So right. the total volume on this program is actually increasing every week. So that's great. It's good. Um, one of the things you might notice, actually, if you look, if you, if you did it, you would realize that the complexity of the movements is actually increasing too. So the movements get a little bit more complex and a little bit more um, like kind of three-dimensional. And then you can definitely see the volume is increasing. By the time you get down to week seven, you're doing more rounds, more movements, more reps. So uh, has anybody made it through most of this yet? I have done um, several uh, of, I mean, I've done quite a bit of it. I, mm -hmm. I kind of jumped around, but um, I, I definitely have done a lot of the exercises. Yeah, yeah. You, you've, you've, you've done pretty, you do really well, Jane, with, because you love exercise, you do pretty well with frequency as long as you know you're not getting sick and stuff. You do really well with intensity. Um, we probably, it, you know, Jane, the biggest thing that I would kind of look at with you is how can we um, just be more specific? Like literally like with, with exactly what result are, do you want to see? And then like, um, it might be just like better movement, getting up and down from the floor fast, you know, things like that. So that, that's where I see the, the biggest way that you could probably spend less effort or the same amount of effort and get better results is just by thinking through what specificity looks like for you. This seems really easy at the beginning, but by the time you get to the end, like that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> this, 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 this program gets pretty darn challenging by week eight and it progresses pretty fast. Renee, have you, have you started, are you, are you working through this? Uh, I went back and you said start with week three. So that's yep. what I'm going to start with today. Yep. Okay, good. Wanted, wanted, to, wanted to confirm that. that. That's perfect. I think that's, that's really good for you. Um, and we probably could, if you're, if you're ready, you know, Renee, we could talk about this, but you'll do, you could probably, if, if you are ready to jump to four days a week, we could just add back in day one or day two, a lighter day, again, very progressive or let's but you're adding a full day of working out, which is a lot of volume. So we just add a lighter day, you know, so, okay. something like that. Okay. Um, and then I'll show real quick. So, so, so that home workout program is great. If you're doing vital fit or if you're working out at your, um, at a gym, but you're not able to get there quite as much as you'd like, or some days, you know, you hit two days in a week. Um, you can literally just take those, workouts one day a week you could take a you could turn this into like a 24 week program just by doing one workout from the sheet a week it's still going to progress it's just going to progress at a slower pace but it's assuming you're working out other places um so the uh, but jennifer i wanted to touch on a little bit about what you said like vital fit has a program um so the the vital fit program would be um, we do periodize your workouts such that for, uh, you know, a, a four to six month block, you're working more on strength 
And then we actually go back and for an, a, a four to six month block, you're going to work a little bit more on conditioning. And so the weight of the exercise sort of does, um, does switch um, in the programming. Um, but the, the, the biggest, uh, the, the biggest kind of influence from the, um, from the programming for vital fit comes down to this and i sent this out in the email as well but the this the principle of specificity shows that the kind of movements you perform in the gym should mimic the kind of movements that you want to get better at and so we our, our program is based on functional movement patterns that you're going to need in almost every day of your life and so those functional movement patterns are these seven movement patterns squatting getting up and down from a chair or the couch or your bed hinging is just leaning over to pick something up pushing horizontally and vertically pulling the same carrying things i know some of y'all did yard work this last week you know doing some landscaping that's that's very functional single leg movements you know most people don't think i should work out one leg at a time but we spend 70 percent of our moving time on one on one leg why is that Anybody? Ask that question again. Yeah, it's been 70% of our moving life on one leg. I guess we have a dominant leg. And because and that, you, when you walk, you're only on one leg at a time. Yeah, walking, you spend about 30 to 40% on both feet, but the majority of the time you spend walking, you're actually on one leg. Uh -huh. And so, so we are on one leg all the time, but then we go to the gym and we do everything with two legs. Yet our goal in the gym is to move better in our life. So that doesn't make sense <laughs> from, a, from a specificity standpoint. Um, so single leg movements are big and then rotation. You know, uh, a lot of times people will like pull out their back, leaning over to pick up a pencil on the ground. You know, that's kind of a, that's the, uh, the, the joke about, you know, you don't pull out your back of the gym deadlifting, you pull it out lifting up the pin from the ground. What's often does you got to spin just a little bit. If you're not spinning and twisting your spine in the gym, um, you will, you're, you, you, you can, you're more likely actually to get injured in your regular life. And so this is actually the challenge. Very often, uh, 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 if you have an injury, say you, you injure a foot or an ankle or a knee, what are we very often told by our doctors not to do? Not to use it for a while. Not to use it. Rest it. I, I, I've heard for a while, Kim, and I've also often heard don't use it. Um, the problem with don't use it is that you will not, be able to use it when you go back to it. So I've worked with, um, there's, there's one specific woman I have in mind who is about 74 years old. She hurt her knee and it was a legitimate injury to her knee and she was having trouble squatting. And so she was told by her physician, hey, just stop squatting. Well, the problem is if you tell a 75 year old woman not to squat, she's going to need to squat at some point in her life. And now she's at risk. She's now a fall risk if she ever squats again. So what I would do with someone like that is go back to the principles of functional exercise. Can we improve the squat? Can we, can, we, can we start at a very low level of a squat and progressively overload it at an appropriate intensity and frequency that allows you to improve that movement pattern? So once you kind of get well-versed with these rules, we can begin to apply it to almost all of the goals that we have. Um, does, that, does that kind of make sense? I'm not saying, well, if you hurt your knee, just get over it and squat. No, no, no. Like, intelligently let's run it through these four rules and see if we can improve your squat in a realistic uh time frame does that make sense uh, uh jennifer in terms of our program is based on functional movement and we build strength and improve your frame and then improve the conditioning of your of your heart and activities of daily living does that make sense oh yeah it makes sense you know i guess uh part of my comment was um, the, I, I enjoy vital fit as you well know. And, and part of it is I don't have to think about it. You guys do yeah. all the, 
the programming and I yep. just follow suit. You know, I do what I'm told to do. So. Yep. <laughs> and, and that's the great thing about having a program is you just show up and you don't have to think. So I would, I would encourage you do that same thing with the, with any time you're working out, you should have something that just tells you what to do in, in, um, in a way that's already been thought through. So what I'm right. offering to all of you is that I'll help do the thinking through for it so that when you have 30 minutes to work out on a, on a Thursday evening, just because, you know, something fell through, you don't have to think through, oh, what do I need to do? So let's think through all that now and then just give you a plan that you can just kind of turn your brain off and, and do the thing. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. I think yeah. that would be very helpful. Awesome. Now, the one thing that you might need to do if you follow that home program is I usually tell people print it off and just keep track of your weight, for example, so that you can see your increasing strength. You know, so you, that is one thing that you might kind of need to do is just, just write a little bit. Um, but in general, it's still, you're not having to go into the gym and develop your own whole workout each time. Right. Okay, so any questions? Is there, so if, if any questions on that in general? The, the, again, I'm not really calling it homework, but the thing that I want from y'all to think through what's a specific result that you do want to accomplish with your exercise or that you want to improve your, your rate towards approaching it with your exercise? Um, if you can tell me that, so, so someone might want to increase their, uh, you know, so, someone might have a hike coming up this summer that they want to prepare for. Um, it can be a goal like that. It can be an event or it can just be, look, like I'm feeling winded as I walk throughout the day and I want to feel better uh, with my windedness or Amy Crease walking is now my part-time job and I want to kind of do it intelligently. Um, so just, I, I do, I, I want an email from y'all that is like, Hey, this is kind of what I'm thinking. This is, this is where I am right now. This is exactly where I want to head. And then I'll help you kind of come up with a plan that I'm not necessarily throwing more work on you. If you're already working out four times a week, then, you know, I'm probably not going to tell you to work out five. It's just like, hey, let's, let's create some benchmarks so that I can track you. As your coach, if I can see you plotting and making progress on a spreadsheet, it just makes it, I, I'm, a, I'm much better at, at helping you kind of progress towards what you want to accomplish. If, I can, if we can track it and follow something together. Does that, does that kind of make sense? So the question would be, you know, what's a specific result you want to accomplish? And then what's an activity that you enjoy or that you're already participating in? And I can help you follow a plan to get towards that action. Makes sense. Awesome. 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 I sent you all an email with this information in it. I would love, it's probably going to take eight minutes to read through. That might, I think, I think eight minutes is, is realistic. I think I sent it to you already, Renee. Um, I, I think I, I copied and pasted the same information. I'd love your feedback on it if it is helpful because I'm, I'm having the manual create, created for the whole process. Um, so if it's written well and if you understand it and it's helpful, I'd love some feedback on that. But also like if you understand it, it's going to be really valuable to you. So, uh, so what I'll ask is by next, by um, our next meeting, which will be on uh, January 18th, I will have communicated with you so that you have a program that you know that you're following. That program can be in conjunction with something that you're already doing, or it can be a new thing that you want to kind of improve on. Um, so I just need an email probably, you know, this week that, that has us, and I'll, I'll send this out as well, but a specific goal you want to accomplish and an activity that you think is specific towards that, that you would like to participate in. And then I'll literally just kind of do the, do some legwork to kind of give you, uh, give you a program to follow. Are there any questions on that? Doesn't sound like it. So you want us to send you an email before next Tuesday, right? Yeah, if you can, that way I can, I mean, I, like before your check-ins next week, so I can kind of package it and send it in with your check-in. And probably what I'll, I'll, I'll either have, 
I'll either just create like an individual spreadsheet for you. It'll probably be a little bit ugly, but I'll give you something that probably you'll, it'll be easiest for you to kind of just print off and just, you know, write on, on a piece of paper with it or whatever. And then you could just even scan that into me or just send it to me in a text in, in your check-in. So Andrew, I um, set up an appointment with you on Thursday. I was thinking the same thing about doing some goals and stuff. Do you want me to just do you want to cancel that since we're doing this or? No, 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 that's fine. Uh, send, send me that email before Thursday. I'll look at it and we can talk about it then as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's perfect. My check-in's tonight. So do you want it along with that? That would actually be perfect. You know, you can fill out that check-in form. And then if it might just be easiest for you to just send another email too, that says, you know, that's about the, the kind of program. Just you know, you'll, you'll, you'll have more space to just kind of write on that. And then I'll think through that, give you some feedback, and then we can go into Thursday's call with that. That'll be, that'll be work awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay, y'all. I love it. Sounds good. I, I have a few questions, but I'll ask you offline, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll just, I'll hang out for a little bit. I'll stop recording here real quick.